Have you ever wondered how you'd go about getting a job at a metal magazine now as a journalist? Now this is going to shock you but 35 years ago I was alive and that's when I got a job at Kerrang! magazine. 35 years! Jesus! In this video I'm going to tell you how I got that job back then and I'm going to tell you how you can get a job at a metal magazine now. And to help us get a steer on that I'm going to consult the editor of Metal Hammer magazine. So back in the mid 80s I was a major metal fan which I still am and particularly into thrash metal which I still am. I was religiously consulting my weekly dose of Kerrang! magazine which at that point I think was not only the world's biggest selling rock weekly but the only uh, weekly selling magazine in the world. Although back in its earliest days Kerrang! started out as uh, a sounds special and then became a fortnightly magazine. If you're in America by the way and don't know what fortnightly means it means it came out every two weeks. One day in October 1988 I was shocked and rather excited to leaf through Kerrang! and find an advert for a new writer. They actually put an advert in the magazine towards the back in classified for a new thrash slash speed slash death metal writer. They kind of obviously realised they needed someone new. Now don't get me wrong, Kerrang! had some absolute thrash metal genius writers back then, most notably among them Malcolm Dome, rest in peace Malcolm. I made a video about Malcolm on this very channel if you'd like to find out more about him or to remember him. And also Xavier Russell. Xavier Russell. Now Xavier is an absolute star and uh, we got on very well. So yeah Kerrang! had some great writers who wrote great stuff about thrash but they also had too many people who ended up reviewing a bundle of thrash metal albums and just slagging it off because it wasn't their type of music. Clearly that situation could not continue. At that point I think I'd already written for a few underground fanzines. I was a dedicated underground tape trader and cassette tapes would land on my doormat from all over the world and I would send them out too. Obviously returning people's stamps as was the fashion back then. Anyway the prospect of a job at Kerrang! magazine really got me salivating and so I set about writing some sample reviews. I actually can't remember which albums I reviewed to send to the reviews editor at the time on Kerrang! who was Alison Joy, the immortal Alison Joy. So anyway I sent my typed reviews off to Alison. No doubt my original typed copy, the, the one copy in the world. I didn't have access to a word processor at that point and I suppose I kind of expected to hear back in about a month or two or maybe never hear back at all. But then something amazing happened. Literally only two or three days after I sent off the reviews I came home from school because yes I was a student at high school and my mother told me that somebody had called for me and I'll never forget this moment. Everything went into slow motion. My mum handed me a piece of paper like a post-it note or something with a phone number and name on it and as I reached out the paper fluttered down to the ground and I had to stoop to pick it up and on the paper was Alison Joy, Kerrang! and then her phone number. Jesus! So needless to say being a plucky teenager I didn't hesitate to call Alison and I remember the conversation very well indeed. She said she was going to send me a couple of records in the post to write reviews on and I said what you mean these reviews are actually going to be in the magazine? And I remember her words exactly. She said yeah we don't hang around at Kerrang matey boy. And yeah they really didn't. A couple of days later I got two records in the post, vinyl records at that. Now I was very much a buyer and collector of vinyl records already by that point and so just to receive two records in the post for free was amazing. Admittedly one of them wasn't the most exciting record in the world. It was the self-titled debut by a band called Mallet Head. A relatively obscure combo I think you'll agree. But the other record was much more exciting and much more in line with the kind of writing that Kerrang! had asked for in their original ad. It was a Peel Sessions album by Bolt Thrower, the Birmingham Grindsters and so that was much more up my street. But oh my god how the world spun around me when these records turned up and I had to review them for Kerrang! magazine. How surreal. I was not only being sent albums for free but I had to write about them for Kerrang! magazine and then I would be paid. I would be paid to do this. What an incredible scenario. <laughs> yeah I can still kind of remember how it felt now because of course a lot of metalheads like me would have written for Kerrang! for free but luckily I was savvy enough not to tell them that at the time. Of course the next truly surreal moment came when the magazine arrived in the post. I think Kerrang! put me on the mailing list and I received a free copy of the magazine. Also that's pretty amazing, a free subscription to Kerrang! all of a sudden allowing me to cancel that order with a news agent. So I got the magazine, opened it up and there were my reviews. Wow, yeah. What a moment. 
I was so happy. And then Alison kept sending me stuff. She sent me bundles of thrash in the post, mostly vinyl, but sometimes CDs, as CDs started to come into vogue. So that was absolutely incredible. And about a year after I started writing album reviews for Kerrang, that's when they offered me my first ever interview for the magazine. That was with Morbid Angel, but I'll tell you about that another time. Drop me a comment if you'd like me to talk about that first interview I ever did for Kerrang! with Morbid Angel. My journey at Kerrang! magazine lasted 14 years, during which I travelled all over the world and interviewed loads of bands. By the end, I was pretty burnt out on the magazine and metal in general, but now it's time to revisit and relive those great days. That's why I started this channel, and more recently, an online community where I plan to upload all my digitised interview tapes. See the video description for a handy link. But at the start of this video, I promised I was going to tell you how to become a metal journalist these days. And so I reached out to Eleanor Goodman, who is the editor of Metal Hammer here in the UK. I asked Eleanor the best way for budding rock journos to get ahead these days. Because sadly, magazines don't tend to just put up adverts for writers anymore. So how do you get in? Here's what Eleanor said. We get pictures from writers and go through their work to see if it's up to standard, and we keep an eye out for writing we like, and approach people to see if they'd be interested in contributing. If someone contacts us and it's not up to standard, we recommend they get some more practice in or give them specific feedback if they've asked for it. We're keen on having a variety of voices in the mag, men, women, non-binary people, people of colour, to make sure the mag is inclusive and representative, and that's something we're always trying to do better at. Even though you won't see adverts in the back of magazines anymore, magazines like Metal Hammer always do need great new writers. So first of all, you need to make sure that you have something to offer. And I think writing for websites these days, let's be honest, websites are the new fanzines. Metal fanzines exist, and if you can write for them, then that's great. But also, you can always start your own blog. You can start your own YouTube channel. You can self-promote yourself at a much higher level than I was able to back in the 80s. Eleanor also told me, by the way, that Metal Hammer sometimes puts a shout out for writers on their socials. So you might want to follow her and Metal Hammer on the likes of Twitter and Instagram and everywhere else you see them online. Look out for those opportunities. The metal magazine market may sadly have shrunk, but the opportunities are still there. You might want to check out this video next. Thanks for watching and remember to stay possessed by metal.